The core, that part of the body that is integral to everything we do and yet can be so challenging to get our head around. When it comes to working on core strength, whatever that means, many of us can end up discovering that our core leaves a lot to be desired and find that we struggle with even the simplest of movements. So today we're going to dive into why our core is weak and figure out what we can do to strengthen it, to level up our overall calisthenics game. Let's get into it. How you doing Cali Crowd? Welcome back to the channel that makes calisthenics simple. Jumping into the first reason why our core is weak and it's simply because we don't train it properly. Or rather I should say we don't train it the way it wants to work. When many of us think of core specific exercises, it's often trunk flexion that comes to mind. And while that is one of the jobs of the core, the other jobs include lateral flexion, twisting, trunk extension, and arguably the most important role, resisting movement altogether. If we want to build a strong core, we need to integrate these movements to some degree into our training. But please do not get this confused with cycling through a hit circuit of 100 different ab exercises so as to hit the core from every possible direction. Again, the main job of the core is stability, resisting movement, especially when we're moving other parts of the body. And actually, this gives us as bodyweight athletes a distinct advantage when it comes to working the core. Through the compound movements that are bread and butter for a calisthenics athlete, we should be driving for stability, which essentially turns every exercise into a bit of a core exercise. There is a reason why gymnasts, calisthenics athletes, and dare I say it, crossfitters, have such strong cores, and contrary to popular belief, it doesn't require a 45 minute circuit three times a week to get your core strong. And just to be crystal clear here, what I am not saying is that we shouldn't train core specific exercises. We should, but we can be far more efficient about it than doing 100 crunches a day. A few well-placed exercises that support with building global strength can be extremely effective, especially if these exercises work in line with our fitness goals and our current strength level, which brings me nicely onto the next reason why our core may be perceived as being weak, which is we're training the core with exercises that may be beyond our abilities. Knowing thyself can be taken extremely literally when it comes to training. And actually, when it comes to working on exercises that might sit outside our reach, we may be limiting ourselves over the long term. Performing leg raises, for example, without a decent degree of compression strength or hip flexion mobility, and you'll be all momentum and no contraction. And we also need to be cognizant that other muscles might be vying to take over a movement. Going back to our leg raise example, a challenge many have is that the hip flexors do most of the work in this movement, nullifying the effort that we actually want to be coming from the core. So in this instance, we need to be taking steps that deliberately disengage the hip flexors or the lower back to ensure that we're working the muscles that we want to work in this movement. But other muscles dominating a movement goes even deeper than this because sometimes we address the weak link as being the core when actually that's not the case. In skills like the back and front lever, the core is often called out as being weak here, whereas it is usually the shoulders that need to be putting in a greater shift to achieve these advanced skills. Yeah, core strength certainly plays a major role, but these skills are called levers for a reason, and the lever pivots at the shoulder, which is where we need to be putting in the bulk of our effort. So if you're strengthening your core with respect to skill work, just be sure that you're putting your shoulders under the same level of scrutiny. We also need to ensure that we give our core work the respect it deserves. We all know somebody that trains their core as a bit of an afterthought, those few exercises that you just stick on to the end of a workout. But if we do this, we're setting ourselves up for our core to remain weak relative to the rest of our body. Low priority, low energy training, particularly in an area that we've already identified as being weak, will likely mean that we end up with poor results. If you've highlighted that this particular part of your body requires work and maybe you struggle with core specific exercises, place them higher up in the pecking order so that you get to tackle these more challenging exercises when you have more energy while you're fresh. Crowd is called the core for a reason. All of our movements come from this place. So use these tips to strengthen your core and level up your overall fitness game. And if you wanna know how I train my core, then check out this video right here.